Merry Christmas to you all. So glad you can tune in. I hope your celebration, maybe t- today, would be wonderful, uh, time with uh, family. Now let me begin our devotion today by reading to you from the book of Matthew, chapter 1, verses 18. This is how the birth of Jesus Christ came about. His mother Mary was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son. You are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord has said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. When Joseph woke up, he did what the angel of the Lord had commanded him and took Mary home as his wife. But he had no union with her until she gave birth to a son and gave him the name Jesus. Now, have you noticed I've, uh, just a short portion of scripture I read? There was tension. There was tension between Mary and Joseph. Now, the first Christmas was not as smooth sailing that we all thought. Uh, Let me point out a few things. Well, it started out with good news, right? The angel Gabriel goes to Nazareth, encounters Mary, and gives her a greeting. Oh, Mary was frightened, didn't know what kind of greeting it is. The angel tells Mary that she is going to conceive, and the one she's going to conceive will be called the Son of God. Well, she was blown away. How could this be? And then the angel said, the Holy Spirit will come upon you. The Holy Spirit will cause this to happen. You're going to conceive, and what you're carrying will be called the Son of God. Well, imagine, Mary was already pledged to be married to Joseph. What do you think she would say to him? Joe, I need to talk to you. The angel told me, I'm going to be pregnant? What? I'm sure Joseph would say, who? Who did it? God? No, you must be kidding me. Can you see how hard it would be for her to explain? And going back to the culture back then, she would be considered a loose woman. A loose woman would have been stoned to death. I don't know what exactly happened, But what I do know is I'm pretty sure she struggled with trying to talk to Joseph or even trying to convince her, I mean, convince him that what had happened is that she was not unfaithful, but rather what happened was divine. So here we read in scripture, we don't know how she got the news, but eventually her, you know, she would start showing, okay? Eventually she started to show and Joseph was thinking about divorcing her because he was a righteous man, meaning he was a merciful man. He didn't want her to expose her to public disgrace. She didn't want her to get stoned. And so he wanted to get, in some way, release himself from this relationship quietly. Well, so that's when divine intervention happened Had it not been God's divine intervention, Joseph would not have gone forward with it. So we read here that the angel of the Lord appears to him in a dream, tells him to take Mary, because what is conceived in her is holy, is by the Holy Spirit. And he's going to fulfill what the Old Testament had prophesied. He would be Jesus. His name would be, the meaning means Savior. He would save his people from sin. So you see, this, this, how the story unfolded was not without uh, you know, problems, full of problems, 
First, the relationship between Joseph and Mary, and then with Augustus Caesar telling them they need to go back to their hometown to register, which is in Bethlehem, traveling 75 miles down there while she was in her third trimester. Have you thought of the possibilities? Like, what if her water would break halfway? You know, we all assume she, she, you know, she would be riding down on a mule or a donkey. Um, that probably made sense because it's like 75 miles away from Nazareth. But what if her water would break? What can they do? What if she starts to contract? What if it was time for Jesus to be born? What should they do then? Well, the story doesn't tell us what other problems that they encounter on the way. All they knew was that they had to be in Bethlehem to register for the census. Well, by the time they got there, have another problem. No place for them to stay. The inn was full. And so Jesus had to be born in a cave. It could have been under cave under the inn, or it could have been the shepherd's cave uh, in nearby Bethlehem. Wherever Jesus was born, again, this was not, things were not hunky-dory or smooth sailing. The Savior was born in a cave, in a place, not a palace, but in a place where the animals had stayed. So my dear friends in Christ, when you look at the story of Christmas, it was not a story of smooth sailing, but it is a story to encourage you and me that regardless of what happens, regardless of the inconveniences, regardless of the obstacles that we face, God's will will prevail. Jesus was born in Bethlehem. God had a plan, and regardless of what happens, God's plan was fulfilled. So my dear friends in Christ, whatever season you're in, whatever challenges you're facing, Remember this, God's plan will prevail. The Savior was born to save you and me from our sins. The Savior was born so that you and I can have a relationship with God. The Savior was born so that God can lead us, so that we can speak to him and he to us. This Christmas, I pray that you would meditate on the fact that, no, it was not a perfect Christmas. No, life is not perfect. But God's plan will always prevail. Jesus was born into this world to be with us, God with us. May God's peace rest upon you and your family. Let's pray. Lord, I, we thank you for Christmas. We thank you for the most precious gift of all, and we thank you for that promise, Emmanuel, God with us. So no matter what season we are in, no matter what obstacles we are facing, or what ongoing struggles we have, we thank you that your son Jesus came into this world to give us hope. That you also remind us that you will always keep your promises, that your plan will prevail. We thank you for that assurance. Thank you for hearing our prayers. Please bless all of our families. Bless all of those who are traveling. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.